Hello, and welcome to another tutorial from the team here at Trace Labs. We are really excited about this one. We're going to be going over the Trace Labs OSINT VM. This is our team's attempt to centralize and simplify a lot of the existing OSINT tools and resources all in one place so that the community maybe has to focus less on digging around the internet for tools and more on their actual investigations. So a lot of people have put a lot of work into this. We're super proud of it, and we really hope that you all enjoy it. That being said, this video is gonna be pretty basic. I'm really just gonna be hitting on what virtual machines are, and then how to download ours and get it set up in VirtualBox. So if you're already good with VMs, you're already running them, you're not really gonna get anything out of this video. Just go ahead, download the OVA, get it set up, skip ahead to the next video where I do give a tour of the VM itself. That being said, I'm gonna to try to do 10 minutes or less, your crash course in virtual machines and how to get ours set up. Let's get started. Before we even jump into downloading anything, I do wanna cover a few really basic topics before we get started. What is a virtual machine? A virtual machine, as the name might imply, is a fake operating system or a fake machine that doesn't know it's fake. It's gonna run on your regular computer, whether that's Windows, Linux, Mac, it's gonna run inside of a sandbox, completely isolated from your host machine, but it's not gonna know that it's not the real OS. It's gonna live in this pretend box. It's gonna allow you to interact with it the same way you would a regular operating system. It's gonna have access to some of your system resources, but it's not gonna be able to interact directly with the system that it lives on. That's why it's called sandboxing. It's gonna live inside of this nice little secure box and it's not gonna be able to get out with some exceptions that we'll cover later. So a virtual machine is a fake operating system that doesn't know it's fake. Um, there might be some ethical or philosophical implications in there, but that's beyond the scope of this video. How does that work? Um, how does a fake operating system live on your real operating system? Well, that's where a program called a hypervisor comes into play. Your hypervisor, be it VirtualBox, VMware, any number of other tools, acts as a go-between between the virtual machine and your real machine. It's the, it's the one that takes care of allocating all the resources for your virtual machine and making it think that it's just a regular operating system. So we're gonna be setting up our virtual machine in VirtualBox today. It's a free virtual machine that, put, that is put out by Oracle, and we're just gonna get it set up on there, but you could use, say, VMware, for example, as well. And like all things OSINT related, we're gonna start our journey here inside the browser. You can go to the TraceLabs site, tracelabs.org, Head over to Resources, Trace Labs OSINT VM. Scroll down, and at the time of this recording, the newest version we have out is going to be 2020.2. Go ahead and click on that and save. What you're downloading is going to be a .ova file, and this is a special kind of file. This is a completely pre-set up system. So we've gone through and we've got everything set up for you. Everything is installed that you're gonna need. Even the, the username and password of the system is completely set up. So you can think of this as a snapshot of an actual operating system. So we've essentially done the install process for you. While that's downloading, let's go over here to virtualbox.org. And we're gonna to go to downloads and we're gonna pick the host package that applies to us. So host is simply your actual computer or your actual operating system. So if you're using Windows, Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and it's gonna let you download the appropriate package that will install VirtualBox on your system. Once that's done, 
go ahead and open VirtualBox up. And it's going to look a little something like this. Now, you're not going to see all this stuff here on the left. This is going to be blank for you because I've already got this stuff set up on my machine. Now, normally, if you were doing like a regular install of an operating system, you would just click over here on new. But we're going to skip that step because we've already done this work for you. And let me go ahead and remove this one from an earlier demo. So all you have to do, and this is assuming that the Trace Labs OVA file has already downloaded, you're going to go up here to File and Import Appliance. And you're going to see a screen pop up like this. And you're just going to point this to the OVA file that you just downloaded. Okay, you can see it right there and continue. So this next screen you're going to see is going to be a summary of how the VM is set up. You can ignore this for right now. I'm going to go over this in a little bit more detail later. One thing I will point out though, down here the base folder, this is where your virtual machine is going to install. So by default, it's going to install into a directory called VirtualBox VMs somewhere on your main hard drive. If you don't want to do that, like let's say maybe space is tight on your MacBook, you can also install this to an external hard drive. I recommend an external SSD, but it'll run just fine that way. But you just want to make sure that you come over here and you actually point it to the location that you want to install. If that's all good, go ahead and click Import. And it's going to take a few minutes to get itself all set up. Once it's done, we can go ahead and jump into our brand new virtual machine. While this is getting set up, I do want to go over a few pros and cons of virtual machines. So two of the biggest pros of running VMs are going to be security and convenience. I mentioned a little bit earlier that these virtual machines you're running are sandboxed. So if you're maybe, you know, setting up some questionable things, it might be good to run those in a VM because they usually don't have access to the machine, to the host machine. So if you're in a Linux VM, running that on Windows, that Linux VM shouldn't have access to any of your Windows files. The next reason to run a VM, and the one that really applies to us, is convenience. Think of it like a risk-free trial of any operating system you want to try out. If you're on Windows and you want to try Linux, just set up a Linux VM, try it out. If you don't like it, just delete it. It's gone. And you would never had to affect your actual Windows install. Um, or if you're on Mac, set up a Linux install and a Windows install. If maybe you need pieces of software that only run in those VMs, or let's just say in the case of, you know, in the case of what we're doing here, you just have a Trace Labs VM set up with all of your favorite OSINT tools. You can just fire that up and not have to fuss with any of your regular system stuff. So now that that's installed, it's gonna be here on the left. To get it started, you would just have to double click it. The, the machine will start up. And at the time of this recording, your login credentials are going to be OSINT, OSINT. So username OSINT, password OSINT. That may change in the future. Just for whatever version you're downloading, go ahead and consult the install guide that we saw over here. And that's going to be a much more detailed version of what we're talking through here today. This video is just meant for people that maybe learn better by seeing an example than by reading something. So we'll go back over to our VM. I said we were going to look at the settings a little bit more because the biggest downside of a virtual machine is that you are taking resources away from your host machine. So you have to tell this virtual machine, hey, when you're running, here are the resources you get. And it's going to greedily take them all, whether it uses them or not. So if you have a quad core CPU and you say, hey, virtual machine, you can have two of these cores. It's going to take both those cores 
whether it only uses a fraction of them or not is irrelevant. It says those cores are mine now. So depending on, you know, how beefy your system is, this can really eat into your existing system resources. If you're on a laptop with a quad core CPU and eight gigs of RAM, it's going to be, I mean, you're, you're essentially dedicating maybe half of your system resources to the VM while it's running. So running more than one VM can get really, really tight from a resources point of view, um, unless you're on a bigger system. So I do want you all to be aware of that, but let's look at some of these settings and just see how we have set this up for you, you know, kind of right out of the box. Over here on system, you can see that we've allocated about two gigs of memory. If you have more memory to spare, the more the better. Um, I don't think you would need more than eight gigs, uh, but four is obviously better than two. For processors, we've gone ahead and allocated two. Um, if you have more processors to give, go ahead and give it more. But for the purposes of what's going to be running on this virtual machine, you're probably not going to need more than two. But the more RAM you can give it, the better. Let's just say you're in there and you're running Firefox with 19 or tw you know, 27 open tabs. You're going to need all the RAM that you can spare. Everything else you can probably leave as default, but feel free to go through and play with it. Now that you understand all of that, let's fire this thing up and get logged in. And here we are on the login screen. As promised, your login credentials are OSINT, password OSINT, enter. And there we are. And now that I'm in the actual operating system, it should allow me to resize my screen a little bit. There we go. Look at that beautiful virtual machine. Very good. So here we are. That was it. Um, that was getting the Trace Labs OSINT VM installed and set up. A um, couple takeaways. The more RAM you can allocate to it, the better. Um, but the, the defaults we have set up are kind of the bare minimum that we recommend running with. In the next video, we're going to be taking a tour of this VM, trying to demonstrate how you can get the most out of it. See you in the next video.